Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE Royal Rumble 2017. Now, if um, if you wanted to watch the live reactions that we did, I have those up already at this point, but I kind of wanted to review the show as a whole and how I ended up feeling about the show itself, at least match-wise. So we'll go ahead and start with the pre-show matches. Uh, you had the six-woman tag with uh, Naomi... Uh, Becky Lynch and Nikki Bella going up against Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia. Um, if you watch for my prediction show, you know I was wrong about this match. I thought the heels were going to go over. They put the faces over in this match. The match itself was a uh, it was okay. Uh, it, it's it's a six person tag match. In all honesty, whenever you see a six person tag match, even if it's the women or the men, it's usually not that good. It's been a while since we've seen really good ones, like back when the Shield was around. Uh, the Shield was fully together and everything in that sense. But um, this was not a bad match. Naomi going over Alexa Bliss I thought was a good idea since it seems they're going to have Becky working with uh, Mickey James for a little bit. And you have uh, N Natalia working with uh, Nikki Bella. Like somebody's got to be working with Alexa Bliss at, at this point. And Naomi's not a bad choice here. I, I don't mind that. I think... Um, that's going to be an interesting thing to do, uh, interesting thing to work with and see how long they go along with that. So not a bad match by any stretch of the imagination, but nothing great. Nothing great to start off the show. Um, up next was Cesaro and Sheamus going up against the club. And uh, again, again, predictions, <laughs> predictions didn't go so hot tonight with the exception of one. <laughs> um, but, uh. They put the club over in what was a fairly entertaining match, and I liked how they did play off the two referees and everything in that sense to go along with it. Uh, of course, one referee gets taken out by a brogue kick and everything in that in, inside of there whenever, um, uh, when Roman Reigns, not Roman, we'll talk about Roman later. We'll talk about Roman later. But um, and Sheamus broke kicked one of the uh, one of the refs by accident, so forced in the second ref to get in the ring, uh, and they end the match with um, Carl Anderson rolling up uh, Cesaro after he took out Luke Gallows and ho pulling the tights to get the victory. Uh, so overall, not a bad match. I I I enjoy this match. I've always enjoyed Cesaro and Sheamus's match. It's nice to see the club finally get the tag team titles or them finally pulling the trigger on them a little bit in some way shape or form uh, it may be a little too late in the terms of the crowd we'll see how that ends up playing off in the end but uh again not bad uh not a bad ma not a bad match i thoroughly enjoyed it i thought it came off rather well uh this brings us to sasha banks going up against nia Jax, and whoo th this was you know out of all the matches in the night that they could have always like by paper you should play it off as like this should be a squash match, but the way that Sasha Banks is kind of received by the crowd and everything, you thought they might have her not maybe go over, but look a little bit better. But in this one, it was pretty much dominant by Nia Jax the entire time. Uh, that, so they're making her look strong and everything in that sense, and it, it just leads you. To believe is like did like did Sasha actually do something backstage to potentially get this, or is this just an aspect of them wanting to make Nia look strong? I think I go on the aspect of Nia looking strong in that in the case of everything versus uh, Sasha being in the doghouse or anything in that in that sense. And we'll see how they play off of that. It maybe is leading more into the aspect of what the. Um, of what the Raw Women's title match is going to be at WrestleMania, which some people are thinking is going to be a fatal four-way. Uh, I would still prefer a one-on-one -on -one match uh, for that one since they're playing off of the whole uh, Charlotte uh, undefeated streak, which we're going to talk about right now because that's the next match. Uh, they started off the main show with Bailey against Charlotte. Uh, this was good. This was a good start. This was a good start to the show. I thought the match was, it was a good match. But I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely frank and everything. I, I like the ending. I like the ending. I expected Charlotte to go over in this match and, um, in some way, shape, or form. And that's what ended up. That's what ended up happening. I like the finish. 
to the matchup doing the natural selection on the ring apron. Uh, it, that plays off of that. It, it felt like a proper finish. And the match itself was good. Um, I just felt maybe they weren't given enough time or whatever it was. I feel like these two could have done better than what they did here in, in this particular match. And, and that's just me in general and being able to and also seeing the uh, s- stuff that they've done down in NXT and everything in that sense. Like, you feel like they could have performed a better match than what was given here, but maybe they did what, what they could and not giving too much with the time allotment. Because this match ended a lot quicker than I thought it would have uh, in, in this case, especially with the aspect of only having five actual matches on what's supposed to be a four-hour show to begin with. Um to go along with it but uh overall not a bad match i thought it was enjoyable i feel like they could do a better one-on-one match and maybe they're saving that and maybe it is a one-on-one match at wrestlemania or something like that because they are playing up this whole undefeated title match streak however they're fully going with i think it's like all one-on-one matches she's never been defeated on pay-per-view where she's actually lost well she hasn't been pinned but um her team lost on like uh, at battleground to Sasha and Bailey at that point. Uh, so they're playing the whole aspect of whenever the title's on the line, whenever she's on pay-per-view in a one-on-one match, she doesn't lose. And I, I feel like they're going to play that up to WrestleMania. And that's why I feel like they should have a one-on-one match with whomever's going to be working with Charlotte that night, because it, you just play into that more. Like you have an out if it's a fatal four way. In that sense, you have like an out, of, uh, an out to it's like, oh, she didn't get pinned, so she's not been defeated or anything in that sense, uh, as well. And I feel like if they're going to end that pay per view streak, especially since she's a heel, you do it on their big stage. Just my own personal uh, personal opinion on that one, uh, to go along with it. But fine match, I still feel like they could have a better one. And hopefully they do get to have a better one down the road. Uh, I like where they're going with everything uh, in this sense. Uh, up next was the Universal title match with Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. And of course Chris Jericho um, uh, in the shark cage. And I loved how like every couple minutes they had to remind everybody. It's like, hey, Jericho's in the shark cage. Jericho's in the shark cage the entire time. This was a great match. I, I liked where they went with everything. I was actually kind of shocked uh, with the outcome as well. I felt like Roman Reigns was winning this match and every in every facet going into it. Um, uh, but they had Braun... But uh, at the end of the match... Now, I'll, I'll skip to the end a little bit here. But they had Braun come out and interfere. I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But you had nice little setups throughout the entire match. The frog splash off of the top rope... To the outside through the table was a great looking spot. I liked how they set that up. And they set up like this pyramid of chairs as well outside. And you're like, okay, if, unless somebody just runs through, it's like somebody's going to get suplexed on that. And that, that just did not look like there was any good way of taking that fall. And it happens to be Kevin Owens that goes through uh, in the end. Um, uh, uh, falling through the chairs there and it, it looked brutal uh, almost uncomfortable to watch but it looked great in the end to go along with um, but it was just one of those extra spots to go along with it I love the aspect of Chris Jericho being up in the shark cage it's like Roman Reigns is down and since there's no DQ all of a sudden lo and behold because no one checked Jericho he's gotten brass nuts he's going like Kevin Kevin you want brass knucks? You want it? You want it? T- chucks it down. I love the aspect of when uh, he had the brass knucks on. He does the Superman punch pose and eventually hits him with a Superman punch. And of course Roman Reigns kicks out of a brass knucks punch. Oh boy. Uh, but uh, this brings us to that end of the match, which... Um, you know, I guess they really fully haven't played off of the whole aspect of... Roman Reigns and Goldberg double spearing uh, Braun Strowman. And that's the only way that I could see that. Because even like watching the show itself, I felt very shocked 
that uh, Braun Strowman was the one that came out, and he just uh, he just waylays on Roman Reigns, beats him down, does a choke slam outside on I think the German announce table, but they didn't bother to get rid of the monitors, so he had to aim for like the edge of the table, so Roman Reigns' head didn't bounce off of. Uh, off of one of the monitors and it, the, so it led to the table not breaking so uh, afterwards he just picks up picks up Roman and does the running power slam into the into the tables inside the ring and the, and that's how they ended it like overall like I said I thoroughly enjoyed this match it was just a lot of fun to watch uh, in every way shape or form um and yeah, it, it came off. Like I said, it came off great in the end, and it just was. It ended up being a good chunk of fun to uh, to watch. And you get two title matches on this show that was at that really high level, really really good level of uh, match quality tonight. Uh, and I'll talk about the second one here in a moment. This one was for the the next match was the cruiserweight title match with Rich Swan. And Neville. Now, it, if you guys know me, I'm actually a fan of the cruiserweights themselves, so I kind of have a different look of the, uh, look on this match than what some other people do. But I do notice what's going on with everything, and that even in the Alamo Dome, and even with a potential smarky crowd, um, they didn't really care for this match all that much. I did. I enjoyed it. I thought the match was a lot of fun. I thought it was good. Uh, and Neville going over was was uh, the proper move here as well. Uh, because of you know how he's been handling everything since he has come back. His heel turn and everything to go along with it. Both of these guys got to show off some athleticism to go along with that. Uh, a good chunk of that. But you could tell, and I don't know if this is just how they place the Cruiserweights on Raw or an aspect of knowing the history of WWE for the longest time, especially when they were going against WCW, they kind of downplayed the cruiserweights on WCW, kind of making them feel like nobodies and every, at every facet. And now that they're trying to put them, portray them in a different light, it's not necessarily working yet. I think it can work, I hope it works. I enjoy the Cruiserweights and, and everything in that sense. The Cruiserweight Classic was great. Um, there's some definite good moments on 205 Live as well. But uh, you could, uh, again, this is like a bigger stage. And you had that potential of like the smarky crowd. And they just weren't getting behind the match. You could tell some of the crowd was. You could tell some of those some of that crowd was actually getting behind it to everything that they were doing, but it wasn't as loud of a response as the beginning of the show with Bailey or the uh, Universal title match as well. You could tell the crowd was more invested into it. They're not so invested into the Cruiserweights quite yet. Hopefully that changes because I would love to see these guys uh, be able to go out there and perform and the crowd just be completely into it in everything in that sense. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the match. Neville going over was the right uh, was the right aspect behind that match and it came off very, very well. Uh, and this leads into match number four on the main show, which was AJ Styles and John Cena. Well, since I was wrong about the Universal title match, of course I'm going to be wrong about the WWE title match. Uh, because they do decide to change the title here and give it to John Cena. And what was a great match. The, the There's really nothing to say. Uh, I know during the uh, live reactions, and I kind of do feel that a little bit here, maybe they were strapped for, or strapped for being a little too short on time or something in that sense. The match started off kind of slow. But that progressed the story of the match more and more and more. And when they picked up the pace, like maybe midway through, it's like, okay, here we go. It's like, here we go. And the story that they were telling throughout the entire match, leading into that aspect, came off. It, it just came off great uh, in, in that sense. You got the, uh, you got the spot again, uh, like they did at SummerSlam, where uh, AJ Styles kicks out of the Super AA in there and that came off that came off great again uh of course 
um, every facet that they were going with as well. Uh, I'm going to go off and say the first Styles Clash, the first Styles Clash that uh, AJ Styles did, uh, Cena didn't tuck or, or he didn't tuck his chin, but he didn't pull his chin back. Kind of just left it there. And he kind of, I, I felt like he almost hit his head uh, on the, on the, uh, on the ground to go along with it. Um, before, uh, or going with everything. Obviously he didn't get injured in that spot, but it looked a little bit scarier, uh, because the second one was done a lot better. Uh, he tucked the chin and everything that says it just came off a lot better at that time. Um, and the ending of the match saw AJ going for the phenomenal forearm, goes to the springboard, but he gets caught, and Cena does an AA in there, and then rolls through, and then kind of go, almost looks like he was about to do Oklahoma roll, but he completely rolls through and does a second AA to actually get the match, uh, to finish off the match. I thought, I thought these two did a great job. Uh, again, it was a thoroughly enjoyable match, um... Top-notch match. Uh, like, if you want to put... Uh, unless they put AJ and Cena together again, uh, you you might even give this a chance at match of the year. You would give this one a chance at match of the year this year. And you could even say that about Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns as well um, uh, to go along with it. We've seen some really good matches at the beginning of this year for some high-profile shows. And that's always a good thing because if they have to keep trying to want one up themselves in the terms of quality, not in the terms of like, um, oh, how many finishers can we kick out of or anything in that sense, but in the terms of a quality match, uh, they uh, hopefully they keep trying to do that throughout the entire year. We've seen some high quality title matches since they uh, since everything has started off this year, and you got to see that again here tonight. I, I love the spots uh, mid uh, midway through the match where they were countering each other's submission holds and getting into and getting into their own. Uh, AJ Styles and Cena they knocked it out of the ballpark again. Uh, I'm just gonna give it to them on that one. They knocked it out of the ballpark again. So this leads to the Royal Rumble match. This one's hard to actually say. I felt very lackluster during this one. I, uh, there, during live reactions, there was a couple pop-off moments uh, that I went in there. And uh, honestly, the Rumble match, I thought it felt very awkward at times. Um, you expected Braun Strowman to go in there and have a bunch of eliminations, which he did. But you also expected him to be there much longer and lo and behold, instead of it being like Sami Zayn, who he's been feuding with, Baron Corbin's the one that eliminates him by himself. And not by himself in the terms of, uh, oh, he's the only one that did the moves to him. Because it was after a series of moves from a bu bunch of guys ending with a haluva kick that he clotheslines them out of the ring. But that's the aspect. When you talk about it, the elimination, it's like how many people did they need to do, you know, need to use to eliminate you? And... But like that feels like a huge elimination, and they give it to Baron Corbin, which is good for Baron. Uh, I think he's been doing a lot of good stuff, but it was kind of shocking that it was Baron Corbin, of all people, that eliminated Braun Strowman, because like the heel heel dynamic. Um, you could have done something with Sami Zayn potentially. He'll be kicking him over the top rope or something in that sense, but. It just felt a little awkward that Baron Corbin got rid of him. Uh, the Jack Gallagher spot, though. The Jack Gallagher spot at number five with him with uh, Chris Jericho, where he where he uh, basically crotches Chris Jericho with the umbrella and then opens up the umbrella and does a spin bit. Jack Gallagher's just a freaking man. Uh, I love Jack Gallagher. And... Uh, and it like I just love the character. I love how they how he plays it off. It's just great. It, it's great stuff, and I I find it thoroughly enjoyable in every way, shape, or form um, to go along with it. Uh, and all and and for the terms of aspects behind the Royal Rumble match as well, no real surprises, no surprise entrance this year. And you can even throw a non-surprise entrant at the aspect of Ty Dillinger coming out at number 10, which 
I don't think the other guys did, but uh, that were watching us during live reactions, but I marked out when Ty Dillinger came out at number 10. Because I thought that there was only three people. There was only three people that they could have brought out at that spot this year with the way that Ty's been over in NXT and the fact that they keep chanting 10 even at the main show uh, matches for like count outs and everything in that sense. Um, there was only three people they could have done. Either give the fans the mark out moment and have Ty come out, which is what they did. Or you have Baron Corbin come out, which it would have been perfect heel heat for him. Or you would have had The Miz come out, which because The Miz potentially ruins everything good at that point. So again, good heel heat. And if they wanted to be trolly about it, they could have gone, they could have gone in that direction. I'm glad it ends up being Ty Dillinger. I don't know if it, that's just going to be one a one-off for him showing up at the Rumble. Uh, and he just is going to be staying at NXT for a little while. Or if he's going to be called up to the main roster very, very soon. Uh, we'll see how that how that ends up going off. Uh, other aspects of the Rumble, it's like in between... Now, now, now think about this one. In between like the moment with Braun... Or not the moment with Braun, but the moment with Ty Dellinger coming out, which got a huge mark out moment. And number 26, when Lesnar comes out, was kind of, it was kind of eh. It wasn't all that great. Like people were just coming out, doing their thing. Kofi did a great spot. Um, I, I, I kind of, I think I ended up downplaying it, but he stands up on the ring post, like the new ring post area. And I, this spot looks so, like it was not very comfortable for him to pull off. So, I mean, I was glad he was able to pull it off. And he um, didn't hurt himself in the end. But he he stands up on the ring post, the new ring post. And uh, Baron Corbin takes a swipe at him. And he catches himself on the ring post to prevent the elimination. Uh, so that was his uh, save himself spot for, for the year. Uh, to go along with it. I thought it actually looked really good uh, in the end, but I think we downplayed it a little too much on the uh, on the actual live reaction show to go along with it. Um, so that was great, great spot. They had Cesaro and Sheamus eliminate all three members of the New Day. So you actually didn't get the uh, tension between New Day at all in there as a team coming in. But you had the tension with Cesaro and Sheamus because, like, right afterwards, Sheamus tries to eliminate Cesaro, which forces, um, so it ends up having both of them hanging on the ropes, and both of them get eliminated by Chris Jericho, and that begins that tension. And, uh, that tension again between the two of them. And we'll see how hard they, you know, if they're leading to another one-on-one -on -one match between the two of them. And honestly, if it's anything like match seven between those two, uh, I'll be okay with them having one more, like, one-on-one -on -one match at this point in time. But we'll see. Since they have the Raw Tag Team titles off of them, maybe that's where they're going to go with everything. Uh, so we'll see where they go along with that one. But that's definitely the beginnings of something. Um, what else? What else am I going for here? Uh, what else was... A big throughout the entire match uh, because as soon as Lesnar hit it, things kind of picked up a little bit uh, throughout the throughout the rest of the match like Lesnar comes in there starts suplexing to everybody and uh, I loved what Corey I, this is why I like Corey Grace because he hasn't changed like even the NXT people that come up he hasn't really changed his thought processes on them or his commentary for them or anything and it like even Corey marked out a little bit during the Ty Dillinger entrance um uh, and he has other like mark out moments so you have Lesnar standing in the ring and number 27 is about to come out and since Big Cass was already in the match at number one they had cut their promo Enzo comes out Enzo comes out at number 27 and Corey Graves goes absolutely ballistic in joy and happiness because of how he commentates for uh, Enzo and not liking him. It just, it was one of those moments and it, it was what you thought it would end up being. Lesnar destroys Enzo, chucks him out of the ring. This brings Goldberg out to the, uh, to the match. 
Goldberg comes out to the um, into the match, and again just immediately spears Lesnar as soon as he gets to the ring. And it's like immediately spears Lesnar and clotheslines him out. Like just like this is the gimmick right now, leading into I guess what you would have to think is a WrestleMania match. That Goldberg just squashes Lesnar whenever he wants. He he runs out there, spear done. Uh, and Goldberg kind of cleans house a little bit and everything, which led into 29, which was The Undertaker. And this spot with... Uh, because I I feel like they maybe Goldberg messed up, or, or I don't know what it was, but the way Goldberg got eliminated by The Undertaker, it felt like it wasn't supposed to happen there in some way, shape, or form. But I don't think the plan was for Goldberg to win this match. But I think they did mess something up. Maybe they had another spot planned out with uh, Goldberg and Roman Reigns. I mean, two guys that are using the spear. Uh, they could do something in that sense to go along with it. But uh, it just felt like that this... It, it just felt weird at that spot for Goldberg getting eliminated uh, from the match. And you do have the interaction of, uh, of Goldberg and Lesnar. But then you also have the interaction between Goldberg and... And the Undertaker, and by the way, people were marking out pretty big for those. And I do like the aspect that they did. Uh, since Undertaker came out twenty nine, he just appeared in the ring. It wasn't like one of those bits like, "Here comes the long entrance." But let's throw the kayfabe out. The fact that everybody's supposed to be coming out either ninety seconds or two minutes, because it's gonna be six minutes later. Um, he just appeared in the ring, and they started going at it. I, I kind of like that aspect of it. And this brought out. And I kind of spoiled it a little bit. Number 30. And, you know, I feel for Roman. I do. Because I don't mind him. I don't mind Roman Reigns. I think he's good in the ring. He's improved on the mic. But, as a face, he is not clicking in any way, shape, or form. Because he got booed heavily when he came out for his match with... Um, with Kevin Owens, and you heard maybe a smattering of cheers, but then he just got drowned out by all the boos when uh, when Roman Reigns came out uh, through, throughout the entire uh, for the number thirty spot. And like I said, I he comes in, starts cleaning house a little bit too, eliminates the Undertaker, which could even tease an aspect that maybe Undertaker's facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania or something in that sense. I don't know where they're actually going with it um, and everything in there. But uh, that led to the final four people, which I'm going to talk about a portion a portion that happened earlier in the show because this was actually good in this in this portion of the match. You had Orton and Wyatt come out already. They were both in the ring. So Luke Harper comes out into the match. And this basically answered the question of what what was the Sister Abigail for on SmackDown. And Luke Harper just waylays Bray Wyatt and goes after both Bray and Randy Orton. And basically does a turn on them. Uh, on both of them uh, at that time. And I love the aspect of that he teased doing the Sister Abigail to Bray Wyatt and then gets hit with the RKO uh, to stop that. So now you're going somewhere further with this whole aspect. But right now the Wyatt family is essentially just Orton and Bray. Luke Harper's gone. He's going to be doing his own thing, I guess, again. Or I don't know uh, in that sense of everything. We'll see where they fully go with it. But it was a nice little spot in there. And this leads to the uh, ending of the match uh, for the night, which the final four ended up being Chris Jericho, Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, and um, and Randy Orton. Uh, th this was a very quick final four. Um, Jericho got eliminated rather quickly by Roman uh, in the in that, uh, in the, like I say, he got rather quickly eliminated by Roman in there. And then, Ro like, Roman kind of gets beaten down a little bit by both Randy Orton and Bray. And he eliminates, um, he, uh, but in the end, he eventually eliminates Bray Wyatt, which led to the finish of the match 
where right after he eliminates Bray, he's going for a spear on on Randy Orton. It gets countered into an RKO, and Orton chucks him over the top rope to win the match. Two, well, guess what? A huge pop because the fans were not too keen on Roman potentially winning that match again uh, in, some way sh- in some way, shape, or form. So they cheered Orton big time for that win, which, by the way, Orton was my pick. My second pick, if... Uh, oh, in my second pick ended up being Chris Jericho because uh, because of and I kind of threw that one in there a little bit later because of um, the factor of Kevin Owens winning his match against Roman Reigns and they could set up a universal title match or something in that sense but they still might not be doing that uh, in some in any way shape or form so we'll see where they play off of that but you expect Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho to have some kind of match at the pay-per-view uh, at WrestleMania this year. Uh, they should be working the program, but they're not teasing the split between either one of them quite yet, or at least not again yet. Uh, we'll see where they're going with everything there. And like I said, Orton got a huge pop for the win, uh, which means he's going to WrestleMania. At this point in time, that means it's him and Cena, but I doubt that's going to be the case. I doubt that's going to be the case. Uh, I feel like at Elimination Chamber in a couple weeks, I feel like Cena's dropping that title. And they're going to be setting something up because you know the game plan has to be Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton at this point. They're te- like the split, the the dissension with the with the Wyatt family has been going a little bit quicker now. And now with Luke Harper turning, does that mean Randy Orton has Bray Bray Wyatt kind of in his sights? And this is where the turn ends out happening. Uh, but that's my feeling where everything's going. Overall, uh, I can't say there was a bad match on the show. The the Royal Rumble match was it was good, but you had two great matches with Kevin Owens and and. Uh, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns and Cena and Styles. The the women's title match was a good match. Still feel like it could have been better. And I thought the Cruiserweight title match was also really good as well. Uh, so And the Rumble itself, it had a lot of downtime. I felt like it just had a lot of downtime. This was not one of their better Rumbles. I mean, it was, I guess in the terms of the crowd going, like turning on the match and everything in that sense, that didn't happen this year. Like it had in 2014 and 2015. You can't really say too much of that in 2016 because uh, they were kind of into the match and really only booing at certain points with Roman and everything in that sense. Like I said, I feel for Roman Reigns. I don't mind the guy uh, on there. I feel like he's he, he's gotten better in the ring. He's gotten better on the mic. It's just he's not clicking as a face at this point. I, I feel like they should probably turn that guy heel. Uh, and sooner rather than later and if he faces Undertaker he's going heel uh, in every facet uh, to go along with it because there's no way a Wrestlemania crowd is going to boo the Undertaker uh, at that point in time so with that being said Rumble was a good show Rumble was a good show I can't give it a thumbs d- I couldn't give it a thumbs down on any uh, in any way f- shape or form because you couldn't really point out a bad match in, in any way so, with that being said, guys, that is my review for the Royal Rumble this year. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.